Hello friends, thank you for joining me on this trip. I'm kind of in a hurry today. It was about a 40 minute drive down here and it rained pretty much the whole time. Uh, about five minutes before I parked the Jeep, it stopped raining. So I checked the radar and according to the radar, I have about a half an hour to get set up before the thunderstorm and the rains come. So we're gonna get through here quickly. I'm actually back at the property I was a couple weeks ago the property that my buddy leases it's about 600 acres i was hoping to explore the property a little bit more this weekend but it looks like i'm not going to have much time to do anything unless i want to get soaked but i can hear thunder off in the distance so i'm going to put the camera away and i'll be right back with you all right it's looking like this might be the spot I'm gonna clear some of these small saplings out of the way here. I don't see any dead branches above my head. There's one over there, but it ain't gonna fall on me if it does fall. I mean, there's no guarantee. You know, there's really no such thing as a safe place in the woods. Um, anything can happen. But you do your best to minimize the risk. You know, what I'm looking for is dead branches that are above my head. I'm looking at the trees, making sure they're not rotted. But I'm gonna string, string my hammock up right here with my tarp. And uh, yeah, I think I'll be good to go. A lot of you had questions about this ax. I'm gonna look it up. I can't remember exactly where I got it, um, but I do know it came from Japan. This is Japanese made bearded ax. Okay, I didn't even have to use it on that one. Let's try this one. That one's gonna need it. Okay. My only complaint really is that this axe did not come razor sharp. When I think of Japanese axes and swords and knives, you think razor sharp and it wasn't, but I took a stone to it, took the leather strop to it and it's pretty close now. Well, I guess before I do anything, I need to get my pack off the ground here. Okay, how high do I want this thing to be? It is gonna sag a little bit, especially with my big butt, so we'll go a little high. We'll start out there and adjust it as needed. Okay. I think that's good. Let me see. Do this without falling out. <laughs> there we go. Oh yeah. That's gonna be nice. Hammock camping is almost cheating. I like it. I don't know why I'm playing around a lot. I really don't have much time.
Okay, so here's what I have set up so far. I have one corner tied off to this tree, one tied off to that tree, and then there in the back, there's a corner tied off to the tree back there. And on this side, there's not really a tree close enough, one that's sturdy enough anyways. So what I did was I just took a, a stick here, drove it into the ground at an angle, then tied a bowline knot, and then drove it into the ground. So it's about the same level as the rest. But anyways, this is my view from the hammock. It's pretty nice. I'm gonna check the radar again because I was expecting rain by now, but the sun is out and it's bright and it's looking pretty nice outside. So we'll see what happens. A lot of people leave comments whenever they see me kicking everything out of the way. They're like, why don't you just go make a rake? Well, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, you know, a lot of guys do that, but I've found in the time it takes me to go out, find a stick that resembles a rake, bring it back and start raking, I could already have it done with my foot. So I'll just kick everything out of the way. I'm not too concerned about the fire spreading anyways. Everything is soaked, so I'm gonna have to really build a nice little platform to build my fire so yeah just took me a couple minutes and i've got a nice area here i'll probably kick a little bit more right out in front of the camera there but pretty much i'm ready to start a fire okay this is just some tulip poplar bark that i collected a couple weeks ago I always have a possum mentality and a next fire mentality simply because I like to bring stuff out here already ready to go. You know, if I didn't bring out this tulip poplar bark, which is perfectly dry, I would have had to gone out here and try to find some tulip poplar bark. And when I found it, it most likely would have been wet since it's been raining this whole time. So when you're in the woods, find something you can use whether it be fat wood, tulip poplar bark, whatever you think will work for a fire, put it in your bag, take it home, let it dry out. Okay, what I've done is process this down over this shemag, that way I can pick up all these fine fibers and put them right in the middle here. What I'm gonna do is something a little different. I have a piece of flint here, and I'm gonna use my knife in a few videos ago, I showed you guys how to make charred punk wood. I still have some of that left. If I can get this off of here. There we go. Still got quite a bit of it in there. I'm gonna put all this together. Now, there, most of you know this, but there's a misconception. A lot of people think when you're using flint and steel that the sparks are actually coming off of the rock. Sparks are actually coming from the metal because this flint is harder than the, than the knife. Excuse me, I lost my train of thought, thought there. But anyways, uh, I'm gonna try to hold this as steady as I can and I'm just gonna bang this off of here and try to ignite this. Got it. One hit, I'm actually kind of surprised there. Okay. Now, I'm going to take that punk wood, put it in there. I'm going to close it around it, but not too tight. I'm going to try to trap the heat. Start off slow. When it really starts smoking, give her hell. There it goes. I'll put that in here. Put that on top. Should take off. This is mostly dead pine limbs. They go up pretty easy. You don't want to cook with those. 
So we're gonna let that burn down, get all the resins out of it. And I'm gonna cook up a steak. Now I did forget to bring some seasoning for the steak, but the last thing I want on there is pine resin. So we'll let that bad boy get going. Let it burn down, add some nice dry hardwoods on top and cook us up a steak. I'm going to use the bed row cook set from Pathfinder Self-Reliance Outfitters for the first time here. I had to put some duct tape around the end here because it's pointy and I didn't want to accidentally shove it through my bag. So we'll put that off to the side and save that. Now I just want to let you know I'm not sponsored by these guys. Everything I have, I've paid for with my own money but I've been waiting for these to come out for a long time now wrong way hold on this isn't the uh, grill that came with it but it will use just about any grill so everything is friction fit this will go like so and this will be for my bush pot so I can cook both things at the same time. I can move these around. I can adjust the height on them. And it's all friction fit. I'm actually gonna move this out just a little bit. Perfect. Let's see. I'm gonna move this one up. So I can cook my steak and my mashed potatoes at the same time. Now this is what's cool about it. You can heat up your mashed potatoes, which I think I'm gonna hold off on those. I'm not really in the mood for them. I'm not super hungry. I've only been out here maybe an hour, hour and a half, and I ate before I came out here. So I think I'm just gonna cook this strip steak here. If I get hungry later, I can always heat up some water and make some instant mashed potatoes. But that's what's great about this. You can swing it in, and when that's done, swing it out. Same with this deal, you can move that, you can move it up. So if you really wanna sear your steak and then slowly cook it, you can move it all the way up. It's a big old thick steak. Okay, let's go ahead and Lower that down. For those of you who are wondering what I'm sitting on here, this is the, I don't know how to pronounce any of these words, but the Fjall Raven Singi Steuben. Maybe that's how you pronounce it, I have no idea. But it's from Sweden, and I bought it just for this one reason right here, so you can sit on it. And if it can hold my big butt, it's pretty strong.
but it had plenty it had plenty of room for all my stuff i mean the only exception i had to make was instead of bringing my queen size wool blanket i brought my twin size i was able to fit my twin size in there there's no spot for you to really attach a bed roll i'm sure you can somehow but i've been getting to a point to where i'm trying to bring less and less stuff out here Whew. smoke follows beauty actually while i'm waiting on that i'm gonna go ahead and get all my bed stuff out see i was able to fit my twin size wool blanket in there easy and i brought my pillow so we'll just go ahead and roll that big boy out move that back just a little bit only takes a few seconds to air up this. Yeah, I'll uh, put that way up here. That way I don't... Actually, I'll move this up here for right now. That way I don't get my muddy boots all over it. Oh, and then we'll lay back like so. Oh, man. This ain't even camping. This is glamping right here. You know, there are pros and cons to winter and summer. I'll tell you, summer is nice because you ain't got to bring as much stuff. You really don't have to work as hard. You know, you don't have to process a whole bunch of wood to stay warm. Oh, but I just love winter weather. Which I see a hole in my tarp down there. Yep, I see a hole. All right, hold on. Use that duct tape. I know I got my ferro rod in here. One reason why you put duct tape around your ferro rod so you can have a nice little handle there, and also it's always good to have a little extra duct tape. When you need it, let's see where's that hook? It's right here. we're good then okay I'm gonna slice into this one here and see how it turned out I am a medium to medium well type of guy there's still a little bit of pink in the middle there that's medium well mmm For not using seasoning, that's pretty good. Mm. You can see it's just slightly pink in the middle there. I'm not a rare type of guy. I know most people are like, hey, you're wasting the steak if you don't eat it, you know, medium or rare. That's just not my deal. I gotta have it, you know, cooked for the most part. I don't like it well done because it's, then it's too dry and you know it's basically beef jerky but just a little bit of pink in the middle there and I'm happy. It is missing something of course. You know some good salt and pepper and cayenne for that kick. Mmm. But I ain't going to complain. Apologize for eating with my dirty hands. Not very civilized, am I? 
Sweating. I'm gonna lose weight today, that's for sure. I've been kind of slacking on my diet for the past two or three weeks. And I can tell because I feel like crap for the most part. But it's all right, I'll get back on track. Whew. I got another month to go until the intermediate class. You know, I'm still getting up and down these hills and getting through the woods pretty good with, without getting too winded. So I think I'm ready. But anyways, I'm gonna clean some of this mess up. I just kind of throw everything everywhere. I'm gonna clean it all up, get it looking nice, and then I'll be right back with you. I've got another quick tip for you real quick. Whenever you set up your ridge line, put you an extra Prusik knot on there. That way you can hang your light. And you can put it back and forth wherever you want. Now I know what you're thinking. Couldn't you just easily hook it onto your line? Yeah, you could, that'll work. But there's one problem. You can't reach it as you're laying down in the hammock. So I'll lay down in my hammock here. Right there, I can turn on my light. If it was on the uh, ridge line itself, I would not be able to reach it. So there we go. You know, you make wake up in the middle of the night, you need to turn your light on. That's all you got to do. Press the button. If not, you have to reach up there. And I'm too lazy for that. Sorry. Well, I apologize for um, freaking out kind of at the beginning of this video the way it was looking there was a crazy storm coming but everything turned out great it's a beautiful night it was a beautiful day and the woods have really came alive a lot here in the past 20 minutes oh man it was is my favorite part right here got the fire going crickets making all kinds of noise put you to sleep uh, anyways there was a couple of things that i wanted to address with you guys um the first one being t-shirts um on my community page on youtube or on the community tab i had posted a couple of pictures of some t-shirt ideas and I also posted it on my Instagram, which if you have an Instagram, follow me down below. I'll leave a description down below. Um, I, uh, I the, Those designs are, are gonna be really simple. Uh, I just wanna keep them simple, you know? So those aren't the final designs, but that'll give you kind of an idea of what the t-shirt is going to look like. Um, I'm gonna go with Teespring. Uh, just because it'll be the easiest for me to do it um, They can handle everything they can handle the printing and the shipping and all that and I'm gonna try to keep them around $20 $20 is the most that I would pay for a t-shirt So I wouldn't expect you to pay more than that, you know, this is not a knock on anybody whatsoever, but most youtubers they charge 35 to $40 a t-shirt. I totally understand it, you know that's what you want to charge for a t-shirt, that's great. But I'm, I've told you guys from the beginning of my YouTube channel, if you go back a year and a half, I have always trying to do things the right way. You know, if I make a little money on the side, that's great. But I'm gonna do it by not ripping anybody off. You know, I'm growing, I wanna grow the right way. Would I eventually like to make this my only job? Of course, but I'm not going to do um a lot of crazy stuff to get it you know um the next thing is um i had a great time with my boys out in the woods last week and i know a lot of you guys enjoyed it you know i heard from a lot of people that i've heard from a lot of people down in the comments that i haven't heard from in a while and i know that a lot of you have subscribed uh for the sole reason that you love watching me and the boys out in the woods or in the cabin which isn't really a cabin it's more of a shed with a wood stove but um and, and and let me start off by saying that 
I hope you guys don't take this the wrong way. I'm trying not, you know, I don't mean this in any bad way, but I, I can't make the boys come out here. You know what I mean? Um, those videos with the boys get a lot of views. They do for some reason. Um, you guys really like, you know, the funny ways that I interact with my boys. And that's me. That's how I interact with them all the time. You know, I pick on them. I joke with them. I laugh with them. I make fun of them. I make fun of me. And, uh... Yeah, I would love nothing more than to make this a YouTube bushcraft family channel where it's just me and the boys or me and my daughters. But, you know, I don't want to make them come out here just for just to gain views. Um, when I go to the boys and I'm like, hey, boys, you want to go out in the woods with dad? You know, and they're like, eh, I know that it's not a good idea to bring them out here because they're going to be in one of their moods, which is going to put me in a mood. I come out here to enjoy myself not deal with a bunch of kids that don't really want to be out here the reason why they were in the video last week is because they were on it they wanted to come they were ready they kept bugging me dad let's go let's go i know when they're in that mood we're good to go but they don't get in that mood very often you know so you know it could be another six months before you see them again it all depends on them but like i going back to doing this the right way I don't want to make them come out here just to gain extra views so right now they're probably at home playing the video game I understand I was a, when I was a kid I played the crap out of video games I really did so but they will definitely be back and I look forward to it you know I, I love hanging out with them in the woods I love teaching them stuff so but that's what I wanted to talk to you guys about you know every, every video I like to sit down and kind of tell you what's on my mind I hope you guys don't ever take it the wrong way or think that I'm complaining because I'm not you know I'm very grateful for each and every one of you I'm we're about to pass 14,000 subscribers so and just a couple videos ago we were at 13,000 you guys are awesome it's much appreciated but on that note it's about 10 o'clock it's about time for me to go to sleep yeah, so let me get this set up here Oh yeah, I am going to sleep like a baby tonight. Oh, crickets are going to put me right to sleep. Anyways, I will see y'all in the morning. night <clears throat> it was a good night <clears throat> I slept great <clears throat> there's a deer that walked right down that trail right there <clears throat> I got up I tried to get my camera so I can get a shot of it this was probably about I don't know one in the morning I woke up for a little bit and heard something coming down and look over and there's a small buck right out there I didn't get the camera in time though he took off of course I wasn't the most stealthy when it came to getting my camera so he heard me and then took off it is a beautiful morning man I really don't want to go home But I got to. Well, here comes my least favorite part. Having to clean everything up. It's not only just because I wish I could stay out here another night. But because I really don't feel like putting everything up. I'm sure I'm not the only one like that. You know, the night before you come out here, you get everything packed up, you're excited, everything's nice and neat in your bag, and then when it comes time to leave, you just kind of wad everything up and throw it in there. But anyways, I'm gonna 
I'm not going to bore you with all the taking down of all this. But uh, I'll be right back with you. Man, these spiders work quick, man. I've had that bank line up probably, what, 14 hours? And this sucker's already built in my home. Hey, buddy, I'm sorry, but uh, I need my bank line back. That stuff ain't cheap. I really don't want to go home. I got to go to work tomorrow. Sucks. Well, I'm hiking back to the Jeep now, but before I let you guys go, I just want to encourage you guys, if you enjoyed this video, to please like and subscribe if you haven't done so already, and please hit the notification bell. It's greatly appreciated. Also, if you check out all my links down below, it'll take you to my social media, and uh, links to gear that I use and recommend. But uh, anyways, I want to thank you once again for all your support that you've shown me. And uh, I guess I will see you all on the next one.